Let us freshen up what the breakthrough curve is and how that is related to the capacity of the adsorption column. A fresh or regenerated column is fed with a feed with a certain concentration of a substance that can be absorbed in the column. Initially, the concentration in the outlet is zero, but after some time the concentration in the outlet starts to increase. If we wait long enough, the concentration in the outlet increases until it equals the concentration in the feed. To determine the capacity of the column, we first need to know the dead volume. Dead volume is tubes or pipes that the feed needs to be transported through before reaching the actual adsorbent in the column. Often this part of the graph is simply taken away and not shown in the uh, breakthrough curve diagram. In the graph you see here, the unit on the y-axis is mole per liter and the unit on the x-axis is seconds. Thus, the area unit in this graph is mole seconds per liter. The breakthrough curve divides the diagram into an area above the breakthrough curve and an area below the breakthrough curve. The area above the breakthrough curve is proportional to the amount of substance absorbed in the column. The area below the breakthrough curve is proportional to the amount of substance that has flowed out from the column. As the area unit in this graph is small second per liter, we can multiply with a flow rate in liter per seconds to get to amounts in moles. So the capacity of the column, that is the amount of substance the column can absorb, given of course the operating conditions for which the breakthrough curve was made, that capacity is given by the area above the entire breakthrough curve. The capacity is thus given by the purple area in this figure. Now, the way a computer hooked up to a chromatographic system would calculate the area would be to calculate the integral above the curve. That is, divide the area into a number of rectangles or uh, trapezoids. There is, however, a quick way to make a rather good approximation by searching for a rectangle with the same area as this rather weird purple shape. So why should you learn how to do that? Well, because it's often good to be able to double check that the results you get from a computer calculation is reasonable. So you know that something didn't go wrong. So we're looking for a rectangle that has the same area as the purple area. If I draw the rectangle like this, the rectangle does not cover the dark purple area up here uh, there. That is a part of the capacity of the column. But on the other, other hand, it includes this light orange area down here, which is not part of the capacity of the column. By changing the length of the rectangle, the relative size of the dark purple area and the light orange areas change. When we find a rectangle for which the dark purple area, not included in a rectangle, is the same size as the light orange area included in the rectangle, we have found a rectangle with the same area as the entire purple area. The length of the rectangle is measured in time in this graph, and we call the length of this rectangle T star. And the area for the rectangle is the feed concentration in mole per liter multiplied with T star. To get to the unit mole, we multiply that area with the flow rate F in liter per seconds. And there we have our capacity. As an alternative, for example, if the breakthrough curve looks a bit strange, T star can be found using a trapezoid uh, again, looking for a situation where the sum of dark purple area equals the sum of light orange areas. And T star is then the average of these two times you see here.